Hi guys! I'm here on day three of my trip in the Rinog mountain range in Snowdonia. So I thought what better place to show you all my gear than this. This is my rucksack. It's a Sherpa 65 litre Van Gogh rucksack. I believe actually with the pockets it's 70 litres. I just about fit everything in this. When I end up taking all my layers off during a day when I get hot, I actually have them sort of strapped under the, the top bit hanging out. So I could probably do a bit of a bigger one, but you know, people get by with much smaller rucksacks. So it depends what you want to take. The first thing I would pull out is my tent. My tent is currently just drying behind, but that goes in this bag and the tent pegs and poles go in a little side pocket here. My tent's a nature hike Cloud Peak 2. It's not the lightest tent in the world, but I absolutely love it. It's probably a bit heavy for this kind of thing. Depends what you want to do. My food, which is considerably smaller than it was when I left. This had three days in it. It's now got like a day and a half in it. Inflatable pillow. That's just a cheapy one. I think it was like two pounds or something. This foil foam mat I use in my tent and that goes under my sleeping mat. It protects my sleeping mat because the bottom of this tent's quite thin. So if you've got anything pointy coming through the bottom of the tent, this will stop the mat deflating. And that's nice, it's just sort of a bit of carpet in the bottom of the tent as well. Really great, love that. And it's so light, it's, it's quite big and bulky, but it weighs practically nothing. Thermarest, this is my sleeping mat and it's a Thermarest mat. I don't store this rolled up how it comes in like you can roll it up like that but thicker um, I do it long and just have it done the length of my rucksack again there are smaller lighter mats you can get a Thermarest Xterm that's not a mat which will be lighter and smaller but oh, I like my comfort and then I complain about the weight of everything so. okay and my sleeping bag I keep my sleeping bag in this is like what are they called rubble sacks I don't use the compression sack because when you put the bag in a compression sack it makes this big bulky mass that can be hard to fit into your rucksack so I just sort of line my bag with a rubble sack and then squash my sleeping bag down into it and that way it just fills the space at the bottom of my rucksack really nice if no space goes to waste so yeah that's my sleeping bag in here it's a Rab 900 I've been in minus temperatures every night so far that I've been here and I've been really lovely and warm in it. So yeah, absolutely love this bag. It wasn't cheap, but it was worth spending the money on. My water bladder. So I need to get some water. I much prefer having a bladder that I can just drink from whenever than having to get a bottle out of my bag. I can drink while I'm walking. That's really cool. Right, so that's everything out of the main compartment. Side pockets. So in the side pockets and the top pocket, I've got all the stuff that I need to have really sort of easy access to during the day. This is my electronics. I keep them in a dry bag, so if it rains, they stay dry. Anchor, power core, power bank, head torch. That's for Claire's um, decathlon. Love this head torch, actually, really good. This is my toiletries and personal care. It looks quite chunky because I've got a massive pack of baby wipes in there. You could bring a lot less than this. Again, I like my comforts. I like to feel clean. I like to bring all my little lotions and potions in little pots and stuff. Hairbrush, by the way, if you have long hair, instead of bringing a brush, I just, um, I got a cheapy brush and took the brush bit out of it. So it works obviously just the same, but it weighs like nothing. That's really handy. Toothbrush, there's a little kid's bamboo one, much lighter and plastic. Mask in case you can't sleep in the night. Little baby toothpaste, stuff like that. My little tiny pots of stuff I like to bring. I also bought a razor, which I haven't used, but you never know. If I want to use it, I just snap the top off so I can do like whatever. A little microfiber cloth so you can have a wash in a river or whatever. That's the gist of it. The sun's coming around. It's getting warm now. Yeah, this puffy is from Decathlon. I love it. It folds down so small. Look. Cute, cute. Yeah, this has been great. As I say, every night's been minus temperatures and I've stayed lovely and warm. So yeah, love that. Okay, top pocket. This is my like wild swimming stuff. So if I want to go in water, it's just a little pair of undies really. You don't want to wear the dry ones you're wearing. So it's a separate pair of undies that I don't mind getting wet. 
a nice microfiber towel. So when I use these and they're all wet, I just strap them to the outside of my rucksack and let them dry off during the day. I used these yesterday and they're nice and dry now. This is just a little bandana thing in case my hair gets to that point <laughs> where you need to cover it up, right? This is just a really trampy light pair of shorts. They're actually bed shorts, but they're just really lightweight synthetic material. Even this time of year, what we're in now, mid-April, I've been getting so hot hiking around. When I bought these, I, I thought, actually, oh, you're not going to need shorts in the mountains in April, but I've worn them every day hiking because I've been so hot. So they've been brilliant. My waterproof top, which I haven't had to use yet, actually. A bug net for my head. I've not had to use this either, but if you come up here in the summer, might be a different story. So this goes like that. Ah, oh, so you can just like sit out in a swarm of mosquitoes and be like, ha ha, come get me. Amazing. But yeah, I've not had to use that either. Sunglasses from the pound shop. These are my river crossing shoes. Again, for wild swimming. They're just really cheap flip flops. They were like a couple of quid with some ribbon tied around so that I can tie them under my foot and around my ankle to keep them really secure. The reason I bought these instead of proper water shoes is that they are so much lighter. And again, I just clip them on the outside of my bag when they're wet and let them dry off. Used those yesterday, they were great. My stove cook set. So in here, I did bring a little jug. <laughs> it's so cute, isn't it? A tiny little jug. Again, it's really light. I use this for measuring out how much water I need for my pasta, but also a little pot to put things in. It's quite handy. Titanium spoon, long handled spoon. This is the only cutlery I bought with me and it's been absolutely great. Absolutely love that. And it's pink. They do all different colours of those. I think it's called Taito or something. I'm not sure. I will put, by the way, a list of all the gear in the description. So this is my pan. It's Snow Peak Titanium. I bought with me a big canister because three days... And you never know, I just didn't want to run out. And I keep one of these cloths over it as well. And I use that when I've been washing up my pan and stuff in a river or whatever. I could dry it off. And also, it just makes it fit really nice. If you don't have that in it, it rattles around. So, you put that over. It just fits nice and snug. I love this Snow Peak pan. It's the only one I've ever owned. So I've had it for years and it's brilliant. I've also got a little fold-out stand... That goes on the bottom of your gas canister. Makes it a bit more stable. Because the worst thing ever is when you're cooking your meal and you're hungry and you kick it over and it's all over the floor. So that makes that a bit less likely to happen. My stove is just a tiny little hiking stove. This is a really cheapy one. I think these are about £7. I had a lighter which broke. <laughs> which wouldn't usually be a problem because I always carry with me some matches and a little plastic thing so they stay dry. Couldn't find my matches anywhere. I've lost them or I didn't bring them. I don't know what happened. So yeah, bring two sources of fire light in. I usually bring a lighter and a packet of matches. At the moment, I've just got a few matches that I scrounged off a kind lady yesterday, which absolutely saved my bacon. Saved me from having to cold soak my food for the rest of the trip. Matches, but you should have matches and a lighter or, you know, like a lighter and a, a fire steel and a knife or something. Just two ways of um, lighting your stove. That will fit nicely in there, like that. My water filter. This is a soy squeeze. Really easy to use. So you just fill up this bag with your water. You want to use fast flowing water if possible. Fill it up, screw it on. You can actually drink it straight from like that. Or you can squeeze it out into your water bladder or your pan or whatever. Oh gosh, still some in there. Only thing to bear in mind is you can't let this freeze. So in these temperatures like I've been having here overnight, you got to put it in your sleeping bag with you to stop it freezing. If it freezes, it can damage the uh, the filter stuff inside and then it might not actually be doing its job. And you get sick. I also have water purification tablets just in case. Again, they weigh nothing. You might as well bring some. I mean, it's really easy to forget about your filter, let it freeze. You're not going to know if it's broken or not because you just can't tell. And then, you know, as well, if you lose your lighter or whatever and you've got no stove either, you're going to need a way of purifying your water. So just chuck one of those in. This is just the bottom of a bit of bottle. Sometimes you need to scoop water and pour it in. And I've just got this little spongy thing that I use for cleaning my pan and stuff. Last is my clothes. I'm actually wearing most of my clothes now. So I've got my puffy there that you've seen. This is a fleece. This is actually my bedtime top, but... 
because it's been so cold i've basically been wearing all of my clothes overnight so i've still got them all on now so i'm bedtime top this is a merino wool t-shirt that's just a little vest waterproof trousers fleece lined leggings and thermals so loads of layers you might not need so many layers i am one of these annoying people that's always too hot and too cold and constantly changing the amount of clothes i'm wearing so it depends you know yourself these are my sleeping trousers my nan gave me these actually i think she bought them and never used them she thought i might like them and i love them i don't use them for high care because they're not waterproof they're like paddies and it just they really keep me warm at night they're great really soft and cozy really comforting these are my bedtime socks. Always bring an extra pair of socks with you that you're not going to wear when you're hiking because they probably will get wet, the socks you're wearing during the day. And you really want to have a nice dry pair of socks to wear at night. My sister got me these as a birthday present. They're nice, thick, cozy socks and they just, they feel lovely. Again, it's another nice comfort at the end of the day. And your bedtime clothes as well. I'm still wearing them now, but you need to take them off when you're hiking to keep them dry when you get back to the tent i've also got some fingerless gloves a little fleece neck warmer i bring the fleece stuff because it's really light it folds down nice and my little uh, fleece hat so i bought two pairs of underwear with me keep your clothes in a dry bag so if it rains you know that your camping clothes are staying nice and dry med kit keep your med kit really easy if you chop your arm off or saying you're not going to be able to go rummaging for a rucksack you're not going to chop your arm off again everyone brings different stuff for a med kit some people bring you know like the proper ready-made little med kits i've just got stuff that i like oh olbus inhaler i love these things sometimes i just like to sit and smell it you can get quite stuffy and blocked up with i don't know i think it's allergies out here so that helps me sleep at night various painkillers anti-inflammatories what's the allergy stuff called benadryl whatever it is electrolyte tablets a few insect repellent wipes i bought one for each night but i haven't needed them a latex glove oh this is repair stuff to repair my derma rest with if i get a puncture i've also got tenacious tape tenacious tape is excellent i've cut it into a few little strips of different sizes it will fix absolutely anything anything breaks out here you've got tenacious tape you're fine so that's really cool to bring alcohol wipe a bit of duct tape there's a needle in there needles useful for all sorts of things if you get splinter obviously you need to put it in a flame first to disinfect it blisters stuff like that always handy to have a needle plasters and blister plasters a wound dressing and a small bandage these weigh like nothing some people might think that's overkill i'd rather be safe than sorry i don't take this stuff like on a local overnighter but here if you get quite a bad cut you're gonna need to bandage it up really tight someone actually suggested taking a tourniquet out as well which i might actually do for the next one because you just never know and that could save your life having a tourniquet if you get a bad cut and you're bleeding heavily chances are it's not going to happen so that is everything in my main rucksack the rain cover for this rucksack is in the bottom here it's sort of fitted in if yours doesn't come with its own rain cover you'll need to bring one so my rucksack base weight is 11 kilos with food and water so that's three days of food and a litre of water, it was 14 kilos. So yeah, quite heavy. You can do it lighter. Right, so for my waste bag, I have a massive 10 litre waste bag because I'm filming and I need to be able to access all my filming stuff without taking my rucksack off. If you're not filming or doing anything like that, you could just have like a really small waste bag. And when I'm just doing like a normal hike, I have a really small waste bag, but I would just have my phone in here, like some lip balm, hand sanitizer, compass, tissues, little survival whistle so that stuff i like to have right here map uh you need to be able to read a map and use a compass here that's my map of the renogs trail mix handy just have it right there so you don't need to take your rucksack off oh that's my little bit of tarp quite nice to have a little section of tarp to put things on oh that's my little thermometer <laughs> i just like to know the temperatures and stuff so that's about it really i mean my waste bag with the filming stuff weighs 2.4 kilos so on top of that I'm carrying about 16 and a half kilos altogether, which is more than I'd like. And to be honest, the next time I do something this strenuous, I'm probably going to need to lighten that a little bit. Probably the tent, to be honest with you. I love my tent though. So yeah, that's everything I bought with me for this three day trip in this beautiful place. It's been absolutely fine. I would say a couple of things I could have done with trekking poles with the ground being so rough and crazy. They would have been really handy and they just give you a bit of extra sort of stability as well something to hold on to yeah and i say the matches i i don't know what happened there so <laughs> 
definitely bring two sources of uh, starting a fire. So hopefully that's given you some idea of the sort of stuff that you'll need to bring. Obviously, you're going to tailor everything to your particular needs some people for example might be fine just bringing a bivy bag really reduce the weight there's a lot of stuff there that you won't need to bring particularly like all the toiletries self-care stuff yeah so everyone's is going to be different this is what i've bought it, it's what works for me hopefully it gives you a vague idea so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon bye